Good. So hello everyone, thanks for coming in. Uh, the talk today will be about um, building smarter application. I put a web in between quotes because uh, it doesn't have to be a web app. Uh, it's basically uh, um, to show you a little bit uh, how, what is text mining, how does it work, and how you guys can benefit from it. Uh, so my name is Bashar Faluji. I work as a solution architect at Essence. Essence, uh, it's a Canadian company. Uh, it's an online retailer, a little bit like Amazon. Uh, and we do all our business on the web. And uh, the slides are available there on the blog. Uh, I don't know if on the OCDC, I guess it will be also available somewhere on the OCDC website. Uh, I'm particularly interested in two fields, computer engineering. I know it's vague, it's huge, but uh, <laughs> that's my, uh, that's, I've been in this uh, since like 20 years. And uh, also particularly in everything related to BI, business intelligence. So um, I want to try in this little hour to show you that text mining is actually a technology uh, that can provide, uh, has a huge potential. And uh, I will show you uh, some existing technologies. Some of them are open source, uh, other not. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what they offer, the limitation, and see how this can be integrated in an app. The agenda, we have to go through a few core concepts, definition. I will try to go, to go quickly on this. This is the theoretical part, I'm sorry. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about the technologies existing. And I will show you integrations. Uh, integration of text mining in uh, uh, on very well-known CMS uh, and other applications. So first, uh, anyone knows what is text mining? Anyone? And it's okay to say no, uh, but uh, you guys are familiar with that. Have you used it? Yeah, there are a few people here, and uh, uh, so that's something uh, you, you had the chance. Okay, that, that's good. Uh, let's go with the core concept. So usually, when you, when you have an application. You have two types of data. You have structured data and unstructured data. This is like the ABC. So structured data, it's what? It's date, uh, numbers, a boolean, true, false. Uh, it can be an enumeration. Something basically you feel comfortable dealing with. It's easy, it's well known. You know what it is about. Then you have the unstructured data. Unstructured data is images, videos, sounds, uh, maybe a, a, a body of text. And you know the nature of its content, basically, but you don't really know what is behind it. Uh, and there was like a study uh, that uh, from, uh, the link is here, the reference is here, that says that, well, I don't know how accurate it is, but usually in application, it seems like 80% of the data is actually unstructured, and only 20% is structured. So when you have structured data, let's say you have a table uh, and you want to know uh, what are the invoices uh, that have a price higher than 100. You have so many technologies, so many ways to extract that. It's a one-liner. We all know how to do it. It's easy. Now imagine you want to achieve the same thing, the same kind of operation, but on, on unstructured data. Imagine you have a folder of files. The files are images, and you want to all the images that contains a small boy or a baby or a woman, that, that gets like a, another level of difficulty. So suppose you have uh, in your database a table named photo, uh, and you have it referred to a file. This file would be actually this nice picture of a lady swimming in the sea. Would it be nice if you could know that this is a young woman floating on her, on her back in the middle of the sea with a magnificent view of a sunny day. That would be awesome, huh? wouldn't it be? Well, that's the one million dollar question we're going to ask today. So I give you an example with images, but we're going to focus on text. Text is easier than image. Images are another challenge. Image and sound, it's another field of expertise, and we don't, we're not, we're not going to go there today. <laughs> but you get the point. So text mining is basically the answer on finding interesting regularities in a large text, a large data set of text. Uh, and what do I mean by uh, interesting? Well, I mean something that is not trivial for you, uh, something that you didn't know, because if you know already about it, it's not a great value. And that's something that you can uh, use in a certain way. You can, you can leverage. 
There are some challenges when you do text mining. Uh, first is that there are some concepts that are hard to represent. How do you represent hate? How do you represent love? So I could write, I don't know, a complete book without, about love, without actually using the word love if I wanted to. And uh, that, that's actually uh, one of the challenges. You may talk about something without even stating the word or stating the concept itself. There are also, uh, in the language, uh, many uh, ways of uh, expressing the same thing. So we have synonyms. And there is always the context also. Context plays a big role uh, in the meaning. Uh, us, as a human being, when we read a piece of text, we are able to extract that context and then understand the real meaning. But how can, we, how can a computer do this? The other thing is the figure of speeches. That's like the, th th those are very hard <laughs> like expression or things that are very particular to our language. And um, the goal of the, uh, the, why would you use a text mining uh, technology? It's, it's, uh, your goal is to actually reduce and automate the effort associated to the extraction. So uh, if you have, long, imagine you have a large amount of text, you don't want to actually uh, someone to read or go through this, you know, automate that. And um, uh, doing that requires a, um, a set of skills. It's not one discipline. Uh, it can be, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a discipline related to information retrieval. Uh, it, it also uh, requires data mining. Uh, it involves machine learning. It involves mathematics, like statistics, and also uh, linguistics. So the, the company, the technology uh, that uh, uh, work with text mining, they actually uh, mix all the set, all those skills. It's a mix of all those skills that you have. And uh, you can apply that in different uh, fields. I have seen this applied in media, so newspapers, uh, uh, TV. Uh, I have uh, seen that in security, uh, secu company that work with security or biomedical uh, or in the academical, where they also have like large amount of text. And uh, text mining, it's, uh, it's actually a, a, a pretty old uh, uh, field. Uh, it, it exists since the 80s. Uh, there was like a big boom during the 90s, and it's mostly, mostly related to the fact that just computer got uh, more efficient. Uh, you can do more things for cheaper. So this, this helped a lot, uh, the text mining sector. A few key, uh, a few key concepts. Um, Natural language processing, uh, the acronym is NLP. Uh, it's basically uh, the, the, the fact that you process uh, a language like English or French and how you process so you actually understand this is a verb, this is a subject, this is uh, the, uh, uh, the compl uh, I don't, I don't know very well English grammar. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my first language is French. So I, I guess we'd say the object of the verb. Uh, and uh, you have indirect object, you have direct object. So language are very complex and you have to decipher based on the grammar uh, of the language. And this is what the nat natural language processing does. You have this notion of entities. You will hear often when you look at uh, text mining technologies that they offer entity extractions. Uh, what it means is uh, an entity can be any concept like um, a person, a location, a company, a currency. It can be a date like, I don't know, uh, July, uh, 4th of July or an event like September the 11th. Uh, 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 so, uh, those are entities, and usually they are, they are grouped in subcategories. You have also taxonomies. I don't know if you're familiar with this term. A taxonomy is a classification. Uh, you usually uh, you would create a taxonomy in order to make, if you have a lot of content, you want to try to make sense of it, you'll organize it. Taxonomies are usually, can, be, can be on one level or can be hierarchical. Um, and uh, you have authority files. Authority files, it's basically like a taxonomy, but more on a, on a flattened level. So uh, it can be like, uh, I don't know, um, list of countries. The, the, could, this could be, if you want to like normalize uh, uh, the uh, countries, you can create like an authority file as a list of countries. So when you have US, you would actually say United States of America instead of US or instead of USA. You could have all the variants. So those are our terms, concept. That when you start playing with text mining, they're gonna, you're going to read about them. You're going to see them. 
So uh, I, I'm going very quickly, but it gives you like a, a quick idea of what, what, the, what they are, hopefully. You can answer questions when you mind, uh, and we'll see that during the demo. You can uh, uh, answer specific question when you, for example, when you mine a text, you can answer a question about who, like what, 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 what different people are involved in this, in the, in this text, when, where, uh, you can detect language. So, for example, if you have an application that can receive uh, content from different places in the world and you are not sure of uh, uh, what language is written of, you can use text mining for that. You can use also for to create automatically a summary, summaries of a piece of content. So this is very useful if you build like a search engine and uh, you want to uh, display the summary uh, uh, below like the result uh, of your search. Uh, it's, it's, and you don't have it, you can use text mining for that. And there is also uh, a feature that not all of them, uh, it's not all of the, uh, all of the um, uh, um, provider that offer it, it's actually only a few, but there is sentiment analysis. This gives you, um, it's very subjective, but it actually gives you uh, an idea of is this something positive, negative, uh, is it uh, um, is there like hypocrisy <laughs> in it? And it's 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 um, it's not very. Uh, will show that there is like lot of limitation with this, but it actually works. You can you could build application leveraging that, and uh, and displaying that information. How does it how does it work? You have a piece of text. You expose it usually to the text mining engine, and it returns you the result organized in a bucket usually. So you're gonna tell you uh, the people that I found are those, the location that I found are those ones, those are the date, those are the companies, and uh, depending on a technology or another, they have their own bucket. So some of them uh, will have very um, uh, different ones that it would, it would tell you this is, I don't know, uh, those are big companies, those are small companies. They go on, on that level of, uh, on that depth of details. Others are, uh, it really depends on who, who you, who you, what you use. Let's take an example. If we take that piece of text, so, uh, well, I'm not gonna read it, but uh, we can see in red that it talks about British Columbia. British Columbia uh, is a state in Canada. Uh, it talks about Revelstock, that's a city. It talks about Boulder Mountain, that's a location also. And there is CTV, CTV is the name of a TV channel in Canada, and a person. So when you expose that uh, to, uh, this is I think done with Alchemy API. I, yeah, it's mined with Alchemy API, it's one of those uh, available APIs. It will return you a response in JSON or in XML or in whatever output format you have selected when you did your request, uh, and it will tell you I found as a state or a country, British Columbia. And it gives you this number. This number, usually, most of the time, there is always a relevancy score, and it always uh, go from zero to one. And as you can guess, it's basically how confident is the text mining engine about this result. And you wanna use that. This is really important. You wanna use that because I will show you in the demo, uh, if you don't use that, you end up with a lot of noise. So you have to, on your side, to uh, put like some kind of threshold on, I accept only things that are, uh, I don't know, at least higher than 0 0.5, otherwise, uh, it's, 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 you may end up with garbage, basically. One thing important, text mining is not magic. If you provide garbage content, to the text mining engine, it's just gonna give, return you garbage. So be careful uh, when uh, in your application. Uh, usually uh, in our application, if it's a web application and let's say it's a web page, you may have like JavaScript code, you may have HTML tags, you may, you may even have content that have nothing to do like ads. Uh, make sure to sanitize that, filter that, clean it uh, before sending it. Also something uh, very important is the output. Depending on who you're using, what technology you're gonna use, what provider you're gonna use, it's better to put in place some kind of um, output analysis. So you do the call, you, reserve, you, you get your results back, check the re relevancy, check the scores, don't take everything, uh, all the results just as is and store them, Make, put some threshold. 
And also, uh, you have to pay attention to uh, term normalization. At, at most of them, they don't offer that. What do I mean by term normalization is, for example, USA, US, United States of America. It's three ways to do, uh, three, way, three different ways to do, um, to refer to the same thing, but it's spelled differently. So you don't want to end up uh, like uh, uh, consider them as three different values. Those are the same values. So you have to put up in place something to normalize the data, check for the acronyms, check for spellings. So um, now that you know everything in theory about text mining, we can talk about technologies, <laughs> the existing technologies. Uh, it's a big market. And there are a lot of new players. I will be honest with you, uh, this list, I had it like, uh, I think I, I, I built that list maybe a year or two before, so it may be changed, maybe there are new ones. I know the big ones are still there. Big ones being like Open Calais. Open Calais, it's, uh, uh, it's I, I will talk more in details about this one. Uh, it's uh, a provider, it's, uh, they, they offer like um, many features. Uh, but you can go with any of those. Uh, they all have uh, their diversity, they all have their own restrictions. So um, Open Calais, uh, it exists, uh, it, wa it was bought by Reuters. Reuters is a big uh, agent, news agency uh, in 2007. And uh, they like put money, they put back money in this project and reanimated it. It's, uh, it's supposed to be like an open API. Uh, I would say between quote, <laughs> between double quote. <laughs> it offers you categorizer, so they have their own taxonomy, they have their own classification, and when you submit a text, you can ask them to return you uh, what category it match. It offers entities extraction. The entity extraction is very interesting with Open Calais. They have a lot, lot, lot of uh, uh, specialized subsets. Uh, if you wanna go deep in detail, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, they have um, also, they uh, support different languages. They support English. English is very well supported. They also have French. French is okay. And they also say that they have Spanish, but Spanish is not good. Uh, I tried it and don't, don't, um, I don't think it's reli reliable uh, in Spanish. They haven't yet uh, uh, achieved uh, a good level uh, with this language. Uh, they have quota, so you can, you can use, them, use their service as free, but they have a quota. 50,000 transactions per day, and there is this limit that can be annoying depending on your app for transactions per day. If you need more, you can contact them, and they can actually uh, uh, configure your account to get more, uh, more transaction and, and remove the limits. In terms of how to talk with them, uh, you can use, they have REST and SOAP web services. Uh, they offer JZIP compression, so you can compress the contents, which makes things a little bit faster. And you can use SSL if you want to secure the, the, the communication with them. Well, there are a few things that uh, you need to also to be careful. Uh, when you text mine, uh, usually it's, it's good to have a certain amount of text. Don't send like uh, two words. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so you, uh, they say 100 characters per text is really the minimum. If you have more than 100,000, cut it down in, in, in small pieces. Do more than one call. That's also one of the recommendations. Uh, uh, send one text at a time. So if you have like uh, two people who wrote two texts, and you don't, don't, um, don't make that mistake of attempting to save time by sending multiple to one. So you just agree, like concatenating them together and then hope that the results uh, will apply to both. This is a really bad thing to do. Uh, you actually add a lot of noise when you do that. Uh, and make sure to clean the content. We already mentioned that. The um, input can be HTML. It can also be XML. Uh, the advantage of putting in an XML is actually you can uh, put a title. You can divide this into different fields. When you do that, it's going to understand that this is a title. And obviously, the title in, uh, in a piece of content as whole, uh, always has like, um, a higher value. So uh, it will, when it does the mining, it's going to uh, take that into account. So that's something you can leverage. And in terms of output, it offers different output. There is microformats. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's used. Um, <coughs> it's a form, I don't know. Are you guys familiar with microformats? Someone knows what it is. It's uh, okay. It just in a um, two sentence. Uh, 
it's a format, it's an XML format that you can use in web pages to enrich. Uh, so for example, if in your web page you say, uh, let's meet tomorrow at midnight uh, at the Gold Coast Surfer Paradise, you can add XML in that, piece of, in that web page that will be hidden for the web user, but that will be understood by the browser and by robots. And they will understand that actually where is the location, that this is an, a place, that, th that this is a meeting, an appointment. And uh, you add this enrichment, basically. So th what, this is what microformats are. <coughs> they also offer ADF in simple format. Or you can go just JSON. It's uh, easy, easy to parse. So basically, very easy to understand, very easy to communicate, and understand the response from OpenCalais. In terms of uh, call, well, you use whatever language you like. This is the PHP one. Uh, as long as you can do uh, an HTTP call. Uh, and this is an example of uh, what the call, how, how, how you can form that call. <coughs> uh, we'll go through that one. I think we already talked. So this is just, uh, uh, actually, this is one of the, uh, of the, on the website that you can find. It explains the different entities, uh, facts, and events. This is, the this is basically the extracted um, data that will be returned by um, OpenCalais. Uh, we'll go because I will actually show you in a demo. It will be more interesting. Uh, this is when, uh, an example of a JSON response. JSON, the JSON response with OpenCalais, uh, there is, uh, it's divided in three subsets. There is the info subset that gives you uh, basically uh, the information about your request, so it, it gives you the document you sent, uh, the different parameter you used. There is uh, the meta, this is in the response, uh, those are general information of, uh, uh, <coughs> about the content and the response. And uh, uh, then you have, the, the, what really interests you is this, this is like an example of a topic, so he found the topic business and finance with a score of 0478. Uh, this is what this is like the cat in the. It means that in the taxonomy of uh, OpenCalais, it matched that term. There are the entities. Uh, it follows a little bit the same as the topics. Same logic. <coughs> OpenCalais. It's uh, used in different uh, application. Uh, WordPress has a plugin, for example, to automatically, uh, it the plugin is named Tagaru. This automatically will call OpenCalais for you and uh, suggest you with tags related to the post you just wrote. And they also do something else, they're integrated with Flickr. So the tags that are returned is going to call then back Flickr and tell him, hey, can you give me pictures that match those tags? So then you can get pictures and associate those pictures to your article. So instead of wasting time, like you wrote that article and wasting time looking for a nice picture to go along, you can use this plugin. And this is how they leverage. So this is one, one way to uh, uh, leverage text mining. Uh, Marmoset, that's also a plugin that you can use. It's what it does. It's gonna, if you have a web page and uh, you use Marmoset with it, it's gonna call OpenCalais, submit your web page, add, this is microformats. This is what I was referring to earlier. It's gonna add those XML microformats around <coughs> the content that match. So, for example, here he knew. There is a person here, he knows there is an organization, there is a title, it's going to add those tags. And then uh, uh, it's going to, uh, when, a, bra when a, uh, like a search engine like Google, etc., it's going to um, <coughs> parse that page, it's going to find this information. And it's going to know, oh, this is a person, oh, this is an organization, ah, that's the title of the person. So this is like a virtual cart of, of that person, like a business cart. There are also uh, other, other um, uh, integration. There is uh, Open Publish. Uh, this is basically um, a, like a, a, it offer, it's a mix of Solar. I don't know if you're familiar with Solar. Solar is a search engine uh, and uh, based on Lucene. And uh, it matches Open Calais with Solar. Uh, and it's a very strong combination, actually, because uh, Solar offers you things like faceted search, 
and faceted means like you could use the entities as facets. And I will show you that in the demo also. Uh, Umbraco, this is an auto tagging, uh, also in, uh, to, to auto tag, this is a CMS, SharePoint. Uh, you also have like plugin in Firefox that leverage OpenCalais. You can uh, install that plugin and wh while you browse, every time you go to a page, it sends it to OpenCalais and it gives you um, uh, tagging. Well, I'm not really sure uh, how, how useful is that, but it's, it's fun to see, uh, to watch actually. <coughs> there are other uh, players, Alchemy API being one. This is like the second big one, I think, Alchemy API after after Open Calais. Um, they offer uh, also concept extraction, categorization. They also detect language. Uh, they have microformat parsing. They do a lot of things. Uh, a little bit less in terms of, uh, they are a little bit more restri uh, restricted in terms of how many calls you can do per day. But they support more languages, as you can see. So if you have to deal with uh, other languages, you can, you can use them. Elchemy API, like uh, OpenCalais, they also have a lot of, uh, they are integrated with different applications like WordPress. Uh, they have a plugin for this. It does the same thing as, as Tagaru. Uh, they have Alchemy SEO, also automated ta tagging uh, with microformats. Uh, this is an example. You see, like, this is the origin of the link. This is, like, what was on your web page originally. And then it would, it would, it would add, like, uh, it would actually add like information to to uh, to uh, to the HTML and to enrich it. Open Amplify, Open Amplify. I would just say that what they have is this sentiment analysis that they don't have the other one. So if you want to play around, you you have to go with those, with them. That's very okay. It's, um, we, can, we, can, we can talk about that. It's very complicated. It's based basically on how subjective. Uh, okay, sentiment analysis usually uh, is going to give you as a result different things. Like it's going to give you, it's going to tell you, is it subjective or, or objective? Is it positive or negative? Um, and for those things, they look a little bit on, on how, how the text is written. So if I write a text and I say a lot of I, are, are we, we think, we, we, we don't accept, or this is really like, this is not very objective, you know, it sounds like. So it does analysis on, on, on the subject, and it's also based, you have to understand those things, uh, they are trained. There, there is uh, all those text mining uh, engine, behind the scene, uh, uh, they, have, they have been trained. They use corpus of text, so they, they select like, I don't know, a thousand of text, and then they submit it to the engine and then they tweak it. They look at the result and they tweak it. And then they resubmit it again and retweak it. And it's a process. It involves linguists, it involves statistics, it involves like a lot of set. But it's, I think it's more, we didn't really reach a level, I haven't seen uh, uh, really a technology that does very well with that. It's really like a marketing thing, honestly. Uh, I, I know because I, I used to work uh, in a company where we had text mine, we were selling text mining engine. We had sentiment analysis, but it, it was very hard to, to practically uh, do that, to, to like integrate it in a real application. Yeah, but it looks sexy. <laughs> this is the example of the response, like for Open Amplify. So you see, um, <laughs> you see, like, is it a slang? Uh, just to, to answer a question earlier, like, is it a slang? It says it's not a slang with 81% of confidence. Uh, it, it gives you like flamboyance. You have to go, I don't know all of those uh, things. You have to, we, have, we would have to go back to, uh, to the documentation. But they actually like split this in different uh, 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 dimensions. Uh, Open Amplify also integrated with Drupal. They have an add-on with Gmail, so if, if you want them to uh, read all your emails, you can install the add-on <laughs> and they can automatically tag them. Actually, I think Gmail pretty much does that a little bit now. They read all your emails and extract information. Um, and they also have plugins. Basically, the point is that it's also like a very, uh, it's, it's, it's a technology that is used by different uh, other applications. Yahoo has one. Yahoo, it's only a term extraction. Uh, and you cannot use commercially, so that limits a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have score. So it doesn't have relevancy score. I don't like that. 
uh, it's too much noise if you use it. You, don't, you cannot like, really know what's good and what's bad. Uh, they all at the same level. Uh, bon, I'm, I'm going to go through this one. This is like really a special one. Zemanta, uh, also another, tech, another company. Uh, <coughs> I will do the conclusion, then I will do you a demo. It's not finished. The, the fun part is the demo. So uh, you, what you need to know is like we have many technologies available. Uh, they have APIs you can, you can consume. I showed you mostly, uh, what I showed you is mostly uh, uh, technologies that act as a software, as a service. But if you want to go the other way around, if you want to take control of, uh, there, are, there, are, there, are some, there is something you can use, it's named Gate. Uh, it's a, it's a, a software suite, it exists since like, um, I think uh, it, it was created in 95, I think, or something like that. It's Java written, uh, you use that? Ah, sorry. Ah, sorry. It's written in Java, and uh, you can, if you, you can. That's something you can install locally on your own server, and you can create your own authority file. You can train it, but it's pretty complex if you want to go that way. Honestly, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you just want to do term extraction, just use Open Calais or something like that. If you have that crazy project uh, uh, where you want to change the world, yeah, maybe you want to use Gate. Um, it allows you to text mining, it allows you to connect basically, enfin, to create more relation between content. So as you saw earlier, there is this photo from Flickr, this text you wrote, you can bind them together and it, it creates value. Uh, you can also uh, make search act better. So uh, you can use fa facets, relate, uh, you can make related content. Uh, it's, it gets very easy to create topic hubs so topic hubs is, uh, imagine you have a website with hundreds uh, hundred of thousands of content and you want to see uh, on this hundred of thousand, what is the most, uh, to, uh, uh, most um, used topic. Uh, you, can, you can easily have that. Uh, and it makes it easier to understand your content, to, to have statistics and, and, and aggregate it. So let me just, uh, what I did is I was thinking of how can I show you that practically? Because this is like those, it's, it's hard to explain text mining if you don't really see it. So uh, I had this idea uh, of taking the presentation abstracts on the OCDC website. I took all of them, I crawled them, and I sent them, I used Open Calais. You don't have to use Open Calais, but I was just lazy and I used the first one I, I wanted. And I text, and I got the text, uh, I got the metadata from it, the entities, and then I indexed everything into Solar just to show you the results. And the demo is available online. You can you can play with it. More it's a demo. I did it work quickly, so you would have to uh, don't try to break it. It will break. So basically, uh, what I got is is this. So ah, you don't see it. Aha. Okay, this is going to be tricky. I have to, um, yeah, I need to see what I'm, because otherwise <laughs> I can't.